Today, we're talking about a really important pump. Well, this is a really important pump, but no, not that pump. Yeah, this pump. We're talking about the heart. And in particular, we're talking about the coronary arteries. Your heart is a big muscle, one of approximately 650 muscles in your body. It is about the same size as your fist and is located in the middle of your chest directly underneath the sternum or chest bone. It is a four-chambered organ with the right side of the heart being responsible for pumping blood to the lungs and the left side being responsible for pumping blood throughout the remainder of the body. The important anatomical parts include the right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle, and the coronary arteries. There are a lot of images and models representing the anatomy and physiology of the heart, and they can sometimes make understanding the basics of the heart more difficult than it needs to be. However, understanding the basic anatomy and cardiac cycle can be very simple. I want you to think of the heart as being a rectangular box subdivided into four chambers. We have the right atrium, the right ventricle, left atrium, and left ventricle. Blood returns to the heart at the right atrium. The right atrium then pumps blood to the right ventricle. Blood then is pumped out to the lungs where it picks up oxygen. Oxygenated blood returns to the left atrium. The left atrium pumps blood to the left ventricle and the left ventricle, which is the most muscular, pumps blood throughout the body. Then the process repeats. Each chamber in your heart pumps blood by collapsing upon itself. Not dramatically different than making a chamber with your hands and then collapsing your palms together. This is a muscular contraction and we can produce a rhythmical pulse by collapsing our palms together. Remember, the heart is a muscle. To do all the massive amount of work that is required of it, a lot of oxygen-rich blood is required. The blood is supplied by the coronary arteries. It is these arteries that allow the heart to sustain itself. Without blood flow, a muscle is useless. In a healthy heart, coronary arteries are wide open and allow blood to flow easily. Today we're just outside of Newport in Giles County, Virginia at an elevation of 1,800 feet above sea level. We're going to be riding up to Mountain Lake up there at an elevation of 4,200 feet. Let's ride. All right, we're here at the top of Mountain Lake, or um, what many of you all might remember as Kellerman's from Dirty Dancing. And out there's the lake, at least what's left of it. Nothing more than really a big puddle. But uh, it took, took us just under an hour to get up here. My average heart rate for the climb was 143. I did a little bit of math, which means that my heart beat a total of 6,486 times on our climb. And... That means that my heart pumped out 791, 292 milliliters of blood, which, is, which equates to about 200 gallons of blood. The coronary arteries are exclusively responsible for providing all of the oxygen needed to pump those 200 gallons of blood. Every cell in your body has a membrane around its perimeter and each cell membrane is largely built with cholesterol, regardless of whether we're talking about a liver cell, pancreatic cell, red blood cell, or brain cell. All are built with significant amounts of cholesterol. So, why does cholesterol get such a bad rep? Some types of cholesterol are sticky, just like this silly putty. And just as this silly putty can stick to the wall, so too can cholesterol stick to your arteries. That causes what we call plaques, and plaques can reduce the size of the arteries, thus reducing blood flow. Cholesterol is found in meat and meat byproducts because all meat is made up of individual cells that have cholesterol in their cell membranes. Plants, such as fruits and vegetables, have no cholesterol. Their cell walls are built differently and do not need cholesterol. 
humans? Are we plants or animals? You and I need cholesterol. That is very well established. But how much cholesterol do we really need to eat? Cows, which Americans like to eat a lot of, are relatively closely related to us. According to a study commissioned by the National Institutes of Health and the U.S. Department of Agriculture, you and I share 80 percent of our genetic code with cows. That is to say that our major organs are similar. Cows are herbivores, or what you and I might call a vegetarian. All Bessie eats all day long is grass. She doesn't eat any cholesterol. Her liver produces all the cholesterol her cells need for growth. Guess what? Our liver does the same. We don't need to eat cholesterol. Our liver can produce all the cholesterol our cells need for growth. But get this. According to the USDA, the average American eats almost 200 pounds of meat a year, with about half of that being red meat. That's a lot of cell membranes, and thus a lot of dietary cholesterol. When we eat extra cholesterol, it just hangs out in the circulatory system until such time it's needed for cellular growth. Another way of saying the same thing is cholesterol stays in the blood. The circulatory system can be thought of as being just a big warehouse. Unfortunately, over time, the cholesterol does build up on the arterial wall, which reduces blood flow to the body parts that need it. In an area where a river is wide, water flow is slow. In an area where the same river is narrow, flow is much faster and often turbulent. The same phenomenon occurs in the arteries. When an artery is narrowed by a plaque, the blood flow over the plaque can be fast and turbulent. This is much like a creek flooding. Just as a flood can cause erosion, turbulent blood flow over a plaque can also cause erosion. Our body's natural reaction to trauma is to patch up that area with a clot so we don't bleed to death. Let's examine what happens when erosion of a plaque occurs in a coronary artery. When there is erosion of a plaque, the body reacts just as it would to any other trauma, and a clot forms. Keep in mind, the artery is already narrowed due to cholesterol buildup. Now, in addition to a plaque obstruction, we also have a clot. This results in very little blood flowing through the artery. The result? The heart tissue does not get enough blood, and that tissue dies. This is called a myocardial infarction, or what is better known as a heart attack. In summary, the heart is a four-chambered organ. Important anatomical parts include the right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle, and coronary arteries. The coronary arteries are exclusively responsible for taking oxygenated blood to the working muscles within the heart. Blood is pumped by each individual chamber within the heart, collapsing upon itself. This occurs due to muscular contraction. Oxygen-poor blood returns to the right atrium and is then pumped to the right ventricle. The blood is then pumped to the lungs where it picks up oxygen. It returns to the heart at the left atrium, then goes to the left ventricle where it is pumped to the entire body. Cholesterol is necessary within the body and is primarily used as a component in cell membranes. It circulates in the blood until such time that it is needed for cellular growth. However, it can build up on the arterial walls and obstruct blood flow in the form of a plaque. Plaques result in narrowing of an artery. This is very similar to a wide river flowing into a narrow gorge. That area of high flow and turbulence can cause erosion. An erosion of a plaque in a coronary artery results in arterial damage. The body's natural response to damage is to form a clot. A clot in a coronary artery results in very little blood flowing to the muscles within the heart. We call this a myocardial infarction. Mm -hmm.